What is in fact up everyone? I'm Nick, we're gonna do some maths. Today, we are looking at population growth. Ooh, treading on biology's toes here. We're just gonna do it properly. Nope, no one came in, that's fine. So what have we got? Some context. We have a population of white clawed crayfish, which we're gonna call W. We've got some signal crayfish, which we're gonna call S. Probably the last time I'm gonna to refer to them as such. Uh, in terms of crayfish, I don't know what a crayfish is. I've never seen a crayfish. I might have eaten one. I've no idea what is a crayfish. Do we like a crayfish? Let me know. I've got no idea. But what I do know is that we reckon their populations are governed by these two equations. Now, I always like to have a little thought about context of what's going on here. Now, dw dt, that is the rate of growth of w. Um, 5 over 2, that's just a constant fine. But w minus s. So what's that? That's the difference between the two populations. But think of it this way. If W increases, the rate of increase increases, DW, DT increases, which makes sense. More of W, whatever they are, white clawed crayfish, the more they can reproduce, the faster that population will grow. However, minus S. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the, the signally crayfish eat the white clawed crayfish, right? The more of them they are, the slower they increase. So the W's are making little babies and the S's are eating them, nom, 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 nom. And what you can see here is DSDT. Well, their population growth apparently doesn't really matter about the size of their population at all. It, but the more white, the more W's there are, the faster their population grows. So they are eating W to increase their population. Nom, 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 brrr. Minus 90 E to the minus T. So there seems to be some environmental hindrance here. However, as t goes on, this term will go to zero. So obviously that becomes less and less important as time increases. So there you go. Sometimes it can be interesting to have a little look-see at what's going on and the context of our question. That's it, done. Now we can just go hard line maths on it. Show that d2, w, all of that, all right? Basically turn this into a single equation for d, uh, for in terms of w. Okay. What do we do for that? Well, uh, let's start down here. We're going to start down here, start up here. Let's go up here. I reckon we can fit it all in. First things first, whenever we want to go from a linear system of two first order uh, differential equations, we're going to try and make a single second order differential equation. We're going to differentiate this one. d2w dt squared equals 5 over 2 dw dt minus 5 over 2 ds dt. And luckily for us, we know ds dt. d2w dt squared is 5 over 2 dw dt minus, oh look at this, a 5 over 2 and a 2 over 5. They're going to cancel out. Who would have thunk it? Right, minus w. I got minus minus. So that's a plus. Uh, five halves of uh, 90. What's five halves of 90 when it's at home? Uh, it's 450, isn't it? Uh, 450 over two. I'm just gonna write it as 450 over two. Can't be bothered. Also, when I look at what I want, I'm gonna get rid of the fraction anyway and a 450, so we should be okay. What do I do now? Multiply everything by 2, collect it all on the correct side, and we'll get 2 d2w d2 squared minus 5 dw dt plus w is equal to 450 e to the minus t. Okay, Brillo pad. Now we need to solve that. Second order, let's go. Our equation, our characteristic equation, is going to become 2 lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 1 is 0. So we're going to first so, uh, find our general solution by ignoring that right-hand side. Then we'll find our particular. So we're going to find uh, our complementary solution first. Then we'll find our particular integral. Now, uh, this does factorize, I think... Uh, that should be a plus 2, shouldn't it? That should be a plus 2. Got a little bit carried away. Uh, so that should be a plus 2. Oh, comment section already screaming at me. 
So this tells me that W on the whole looks like A e to the one half t plus B e to the two t. Step one done. Now we find our complementary solution. I'll do that over here. Try and save a bit of space. We're going to try W is so do we have any overlap? I've got e to the half t, e to the 2t, that's an e to the minus t, I'm all good. So I'm going to try c, e to the minus t. d2w, dt squared will just be, pick up a minus, pick up a minus, just c, so that's 2c, e to the minus t. Uh, dw, dt, I pick up a minus, so that's a plus 5c, e to the minus t. Plus 2c, e to the minus t is equal to 450 e to the minus t. Cussing it close on the board there, I think. All of this to say, kushponk, 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 that 9c is 450, so c is 50, which gives me the fact that w is a e to the 1 half t plus b e to the 2t plus 50. So that's nice. That feels nice. Let's hope that works out for me. Now then, um, tell you what, before we get super duper far, I do actually prep these a little bit. Yeah, awesome. Now how am I going to find S? We could go from scratch from S, but we need to be really careful with that because these two things are coupled completely here. These two are completely coupled they are linked together. I've already got two of my constants here. I've got my two constants. I'm only going to get two constants. Why? I've got, I've differentiated once, differentiated, I've got two, uh, I've differentiated twice. These are two first order uh, differential equations. So I should only have two constants of integration, right? And I've already got two here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this and whack it back in to there. Um, which tells me that ds dt is two-fifths of w, that's two-fifths a e to the half t, plus two-fifths b e to the two t, plus two-fifths of that, plus 20, minus, oh sorry, 50 e to the minus t, idiot, plus uh, 20 e to the minus t, take away the 90 e to the minus t, so that will give me minus 70 e to the minus t. I need to integrate that. One integral coming up. That will give me 4 fifths a e to the half t, plus uh, 1 fifth b e to the 2t, plus 70e to the minus t. Awesome. Probably going to wipe the board out in a sec because I've got a bunch more work to do. But that is my first step. And I do have two constants of integration, a's and b's. These five starting to drift towards s's there. Tell you what, right before I rub the board out, let's write them out properly. And cool, we're all done. All right. Now, if you had decided to go from scratch and solve S completely by, from the beginning, you would have to use two separate uh, constants, say C and D, D and E, but you would have to then, by plugging it uh, all back into here, you would get some simultaneous equations for A, B, C and D, or whatever you've used, and you would get back exactly here. So the much, much better and faster way is to solve one of them and plug that back into your system. Do you feel me? Oh. Shouldn't ever say that, should I? Okay. Let's just pop these two results up here. So I know that W is A e to the 1 half T plus B e to the 2 T plus 50 e to the minus T. And I know that S There is so, I, I won't lie to you, there is so much scope in these questions for making silly algebraic mistakes, it is terrifying. None of the steps by themselves are desperately difficult, but it's chaining them all together without 
uh, messing up, that's where the real skill lies. And by skill, practice. Right, what do we know? We've got our initial conditions, so let's find A and B. Uh, w is 65 when T is zero. Uh, the old classic, all the E's go bye-byes. And then S is 85. It's four fifths A plus one fifth B plus 70. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit sneaky here and cheat because I've got the answers for this written down somewhere. I get A is, uh, what is it? A is 20 and B is minus five. Just however you want to solve the simultaneous equations, do them by hand, tidy them up a bit, whack them into your calculator. I don't know, it's a free country, you do you. But I reckon these are the two things. Does that work for both of them? Four fifths, 16. Uh, minus one is 15. Yay, it works. Excellent. Now we want to find the time when the white claw, so W, why couldn't we just write W? I don't know. So we want to find when W is zero. I zero is 20 E to the half capital T plus minus, we just said B is minus five capital T plus 50 E to the minus T. This looks Awful. It looks awful, but it will sort out for us so long as we are careful. Now, as soon as I see an e to the minus t, I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply everything. Let's get the blue pen out. Do love me a blue pen. Let's multiply everything by e to the t. I can get 0 is 20 e to the 3t over 2 minus 5e to the 3t plus 50. Now then, <laughs> what you may notice is that if I write something like u equals e to the 3t over 2, what I've actually got is a nice quadratic. Uh, I could divide everything by 5 as well, couldn't I? So let's move that over to the left-hand side, divide everything by 5. So I end up with a u squared minus 4u. Uh, Minus 10 is zero. Is that what I'm expecting? I do believe so, yes. Now we try and solve that. Uh, U is four plus or minus square root 16 uh, plus 40 is 56 over two. I think that does something nice, doesn't it? Root 56 is 4 times 14. <laughs> 2 plus or minus root 14. Again, you could just whack that into your calculator. I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of over-reliance on it, but you do you. Now, I can only have one of these. because, so of course, it's e to the 3t over 2 is equal to 2 plus or minus square root 14. But this is an exponential. It should be positive, greater than zero. Therefore, I'm not allowed the minus sign. Not. Allowed. So now I just need to solve that. I get t is 2 thirds ln of two plus square root 14, huh, huh, huh. calculator. Um, do you know what, it's already on here. Someone was doing maths on the train. I think these were in years. So in fact, following this, the poor white clawed crayfish will die out in 1.165 years. And again, that's because these guys are just nomming away at them like nobody's business. All right, hope you found that interesting. We got a nice, uh, simple-ish, I say simple, none of it is simple, but straightforward, I think is probably the better word, a system of linear uh, first order uh, differential equations, and we just solve it and do a whole load of algebra. Just do it, just do it, just be good and do it.
That's my advice. For more great tips like that, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell so you know when the next one of these deeply insightful videos comes out. I'm Nick and I'll see you next time.